The California Academy of Sciences has been around for 150 years. We began with a mission to explore, explain, protect the natural world. And here we are now in a brand new building, and we pretty much have the same mission, but we've also enlarged that really. So now we're very much focused on sustainability and, and two big questions, if you will, and those are how did we get here and what are we going to do to make sure we can stay around is, is very much about what the Academy does. Uh, I still remember when I was presented with the first sketches and, and look at what uh, Renzo uh, had in mind then. You, you can see the logic behind it. He just wants to create a, a, a sculptural piece that you know it just by looking at it, it blends into the surrounding landscape. We're not here to di uh, disrupt the environment, we're here to accentuate. And it's, it, it's fitting so beautifully. It's probably the most prestigious project that's been awarded in San Francisco in the 22 years we've been here. Everyone's waiting to take their kids to see it again. There are several reproductions of what was there originally. The entrance to the Steinhardt Aquarium, the ground floor of Africa Hall with the painted dioramas. The difference really now though is you have two major I iconic exhibits, the, the planetarium and the 90-foot diameter glass bowler which contains a four-story tropical rainforest. Now that you see the building, it seems so natural and a, like it could be no other way. But when I first saw the concept, I thought, this is really going to be another wonder of the world. The roof was, from day one, a part of the concept, the idea of lifting up a piece of the park. And, and I think that's such a, a beautiful concept. It evolved into an essential part of the building design. It really has metabolic functions. It's, you can think of it as an organ. It helps the building to breathe, uh, ventilation, it provides daylight, it moderates temperature, and uh, it also is an ecosystem. It's, it is, in fact, a living roof, not just plants, but all kinds of birds and butterflies that are making their home now on the roof of the academy. I got involved in the project in early 2002 when the Academy was first thinking about a new building but also about transforming themselves as an organization. Some of the, the, the exhibits and some of the, the, the questions we pose to our guests here at the Academy is, you know, what are you doing? How are you living your lifestyle? How might you be able to change it? And as a part of our exhibitry here, we make the point that this museum was built with some very sustainable minds uh, at, at the helm, so to speak. And we want to make sure that our operations are sustainable so we can be an example and then provide opportunities and suggestions how others can be sustainable as well. The Academy was uh, uh, accepted as a green building pilot program in 2001. What a pilot program it's turned out to be. In, in this department, we do a number of programs, including recycling and energy planning, and environmental justice, and green buildings. We work with design teams throughout the city to raise the environmental performance of their construction projects. I am uh, honored and, and humbled to be uh, I I uh, working shoulder to shoulder with uh, the team from Arup. It's been a really great learning experience for me. And you know, I have a couple degrees in engineering, but you know, it's really wonderful to work with uh, the uh, large team of really committed professionals in, in this uh, design field. It was all about collaboration and it, it started with the owner uh, who embraced the entire design team. It was just a fantastically collaborative exercise. So I have to say the photovoltaics are my favorite and, and the reason is because they were not part of the original design. There was a wood trellis that was originally conceived with vines over it. That eventually evolved into a sleeker glass and steel structure that Renzo wanted to do. And it was just at that moment when he kind of proposed that, that I was like, gotcha. If you're going to propose glass and steel, we can put the photovoltaics in there. <laughs> that was just the toe in the door. 
Then we really had to go through literally years of finding the right photovoltaics that could be integrated, that could provide shading as well as daylight, that wouldn't create a cave-like effect as you approached that entrance and had that aha moment. But the fact that we were able to do that and get the photovoltaics integrated is just um, a, a tremendous feeling. And whenever I see them, I just think, victory. <laughs> For me, actually, it was when I went to one of the pre-opening events and there was, a, um, there was about 3,000 people there. And in the, the building changed completely. The, the building just came alive. And it was about parents bringing their kids, parents bringing the grandparents. And um, there were just some wonderful moments. And as the president of the academy said when he was giving a press address, you know, he finally realized they got it right because it passed the seven-year-old kid sniff test. And for me, that's, that just about sums it up. As far as my career is concerned, this one is, is a shining, shining uh, moment. It's something that we and my kids really are proud of to be able to be part of it. Uh, my kids were there uh, two weeks ago. They have not stopped talking about it. One thing we're wanting to do, of course, is change people's behaviors. I mean, we educate, of course, we inform, we intrigue people when they get here, but ultimately we're about changing people's behaviors, saying, look, there's a whole range of things you could do to have less impact on the world around you. We're not saying to people, you've got to do all of them. We're saying, here's a menu. Pick the ones that work for you, and little by little, if we all work together, we'll all have a, a more positive impact on the world around us.